Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. I'm your journey reader, Lloyd DJ L. Dub Wharton. And today's reading is taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapters 15 through 17. Our scheduled reading follows the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. So let's begin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace this day. We just thank you that we can just apply what we hear. May we uh, govern ourselves accordingly. We just thank you what thus says the Lord. Uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We just thank you that we can apply what we hear as we go into the reading for this next session. Thank you, Lord God. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Let's begin. 2 Samuel chapter 15. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. So it was, whenever anyone who was, had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision, that Absalom would call to him and say, What city are you from? And he would say, Your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your case is good and right, and there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who had any suit would cause come to me, and I would give him justice. And so it was, whenever anyone came down uh, to bow to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. And this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said to the king, please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I have made to the Lord. For your servant took a vow while I dwelt in Geshur in Syria, saying, if the Lord indeed brings me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. <clears throat> and the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you will say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with, and with Absalom went two hundred men invited from Jerusalem, and they went along innocently and did not know anything. Then Absalom sent for Ephrathel, the Gileonite, David's counselor from his city, from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy, the conspiracy grew strong, for the people from Absalom continually increased in number. Now a messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all the servants who were there with him in Israel, arise and let us flee and we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart, lest he overtakes us suddenly and bring disaster upon us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servant said to the king, We are your servants, ready to do whatever my lord king commands. Then the king went out with all his households after him. Then the king left ten women concubines to keep the house. Then the king went out with all the people after him and stopped at the outskirts. Then all his servants passed before him, and all the Chariotites and the Pelotites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men who had followed him from Gath, passed before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. So in fact, Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Should I make you wander up and down with us today, since I go I know not where? Return and take your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, Surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. So David said to Ittai, Go and cross over. Then Ittai the Gittite and all his men and all the little ones who were with him crossed over. 
and all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people crossed over. The king himself also crossed over the brook Kiran, and the people crossed over toward the way of the wilderness. There was Zadok also, and all the Levites with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abathar went up until all the people had finished crossing over from the city. Then king said to Zadok, Carry the Ark of God back to the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and show me both it and his dwelling place. But if he says thus, I have no delight in you, here I am, let him do to me as seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimazaz, your son, and Jonathan, the son of Abathar. See, I will wait in the plain to the wilderness until the word comes from you to inform me. Therefore, Zadok and Abathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. So David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives and wept as he went up. And he had his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their hairs and, went, and they went up, weeping as they went up. Then someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Now it happened when David had come to the top of the mountain uh, where he worshiped God, there was Hushai the archite uh, coming to meet him and his robe torn and dust on his head. And David said to him, if you go on with me, then you will become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I was your father's servant previously. So I will now also be your servant then you may defeat the council of Thiphotho uh, for me. And do you not have Zadok the Abathar, the priest in your house? Therefore, it will be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall tell to Zadok the Ab and Abathar, the priest. Indeed, they have there with them their two sons, Amaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abathar's son. And by them, you shall send me everything you hear. So Heshai, David's friend, went into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Chapter 16. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of satin donkeys, and on them were 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, and 100 summer fruits, and, skins of, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, what do you mean to do with these? So Ziba said, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, and where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, here, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And Ziba said, I humbly bow before you, that I may find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. Now the king David came to Baram, where what was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, came uh, coming from there. He came out cursing continuously as he came. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Also Shimei said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty men, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. So now you are caught in your own evil, because you are a bloodthirsty man. And Abishai, the son of Zerah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I do, what have I do with you, you sons of Zerah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said to him, Curse David, who is, then shall say, Why have you done so? 
And David said to Abishai and to his servants, See how my son, who came from my own body, seeks my life. How much more now may, his, may this Benjamite? Let him alone, let him curse, for so the Lord has ordered him. It may be the Lord will look on my affliction, that the Lord will repay me good for this cursing day. And as David and his men went along the road, Shimei went along the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went, threw stones at him and kicked up, uh, kicked up dust. Now the king and all the people who were with him came, became weary, so they refreshed themselves there. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and that Thipothel uh, was with him. And so it was when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! So Absalom said to Hushai, This is your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Abishai said to Absalom, No, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel choose, his I will be, and with him I will remain. Furthermore, whom shall I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so I will be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ephrathah, Give advice as to what ye should do. And Ephrathah said to Absalom, Go in your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you have abort by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they pitched a tent for Absalom at the top of the house, and Absalom went in his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice, the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one had inquired at an oracle of God. So as all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Chapter 17. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Now let me choose 12,000 men, and I will rise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and weak, and make him afraid, and all the people who are with him will flee, and I will strike only the king. Then I will bring back all the people to you. When all return, except the man whom you seek, all the people will be at peace. And the same please Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he says um, too. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him, saying, Atipaso has spoken to in this matter. Shall we do as he says? If not, speak up. So Hushai said to Absalom, The advice of Atipaso was given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, You know your father and his men that they are mighty men, that they are enraged in their minds like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is a man of war and will not camp with the people. Surely by now he is hidden in some pit or in some other place. And it will be when some of them are overthrown at, at the first that whoever hears it will say, there is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even he, he who is valiant whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will melt completely. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and whose, and those who are with him are valiant men. Therefore, I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you, from Dan to Beersheba, uh, like the sand that is by the sea for multitude, that you go into battle in person. So we will meet, we will come upon him in some place where he may be found. And he will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him, all the men who are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he is withdrawn into a city, then all Israel shall bring ropes to that city. And we will pull it into the river until there is not one stone found there. So Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The advice of Hishai the Archite is better than the advice of Ethipatho. So the Lord has purposed to defeat the good advice of Antipatho, uh, to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. And Hushai said to Zadok, 
and Abathar the priest. Thus and so Ephesus advised Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and so I have advised. Now therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily cross over, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now Jonathan and Amahaz, Amahaz uh, stayed in, in Rogel, uh, for they dared not be seen coming into the city. So a female servant would come and tell them, and they would go and tell King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But both of them went away quickly and came to a man's house in Barium, where he had a well in his court, and they went down into it. Then the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground grain on it, and the, th the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the women at the house, they said, Where are Amos and Jamas, Jonathan? So the women said to them, They have gone over the water brook. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. Now it came to pass, after they had departed, that they had came out of the well and went and told King David, and said to David, Arise and cross over the water quickly, for thus is Astipatel advised against you. So David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. By morning light, not one of them was left who had not gone over the Jordan. Now when Thippethel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled the donkey, arose, and went home to his house to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died, and he, had buried, and he was buried in his father's tomb. Then David went to Mahanam, and Absalom crossed over the, road, uh, over the Jordan. He and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amahaz uh, captain of the army instead of Joab. This Amahaz was the son of the man whose name was Jithra, an Israelite, who had gone into Abigail, the daughter of Nahaz, the sister of Zeriah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. Now it happened when David had come from Mahanam that Sobi, the son of Nahash from Rabbah of the people of Ammon, Machir, the son of Amiel, and Lodabar, uh, from Lodabar, and Barazel, the Gileadite, Gileadite from Rogalim, brought beds and basins, earthen vessels and wheat, barley and flour, parched grain and beans, lentils and parched seeds, honey and curds, sheep and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, The people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. This is the reading of the word. All right, everybody. So as you can see, uh, the counsel of God is wiser than the counsel of men. Uh, you know, it's said in the Bible that the foolishness of God is wiser than the counsel, the wisdom of men. So let us be seeking God first, seeking his counsel, not the counsel of men, which can be wicked. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, that you alone are the truth and the way and the life. And we thank you that no one should come to the Father unless they come through you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to discern uh, what thus says the Lord, and also discern the spirits of people, Lord God, that we can just choose rightly before you. We thank you for the reading of this word, and we thank you for your counsel. Your word doesn't fail. It doesn't come back void. We just bless and praise you for yet again as we continue in your word, Lord God, seeking you first. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. This is DJ L. Dub, Lloyd Warden, coming to you live and direct, and love you. Until next time.